Right, I make it one minute past uh, five o'clock, so let's kick off. Um, so thank you everyone who is taking part today and thank you everyone who is listening virtually. So welcome everyone to our August episode of Women Leaders in Customer Success on behalf of myself, Mina, and Practical CSM. As you know, I'm very excited to be bringing our excellent guest over from the great series of uh, female leaders in CS. And every month I will be hosting a new guest and together we pick at various hot topics that are around in CS. Um, so today is no different. Today I have the great pleasure of introducing you to Kelly Lucas. Um, I'm sure for some of you, she needs no introductions, but we will go through that anyway. And uh, as our topic, we are going to be deciphering today a formula called customer success plus people success equal business success. So I can't wait to get into details about this. Um, for those benefit of the audience, Kelly and I have known each other for a little while now. We've had numerous conversations about this topic. So if you hear us getting into this deep, you, that's that's why it is. But like I said, Kelly, welcome. Um, Thank you. I know you're you know, a legend in the CS world and a lot of people probably have met you or heard about you or read your books or, or, or seen you at Pulse or any of the other conferences beforehand. Uh, but with the benefit of someone who hasn't met you yet, um, would you mind us telling a little bit more about yourself, uh, introducing yourself to the audience, and uh, and how did you get into CS? Well, thank you. Uh, I will try and do this succinctly, uh, something that I'm not terribly well known for. <laughs> uh, so I am uh, I'm currently um, an author, um, a coach, and a consultant focusing on customer success. And as the title of this uh, webinar suggests, people success. I'm very um, passionate about the two. I think the two combined makes business success and also individual and personal success. My background, um, I started in finance a long time ago, uh, but I've always been um, in the business of elevating other people, uh, even from my school days, I was always supporting everyone, my friends, my family, the people in school who didn't really have friends, I always made sure that they were okay and was looking out for them. And then from finance, I went into consulting. Uh, so consulting is really customer success. You're working with people, you're understanding what their business is doing, you're looking for their outcomes, you're looking for their requirements, and then you're working in partnership and relationship with them. So I have unofficially been working in customer success for probably most of my career, but I formally landed in it uh, at a company called Artesian, which is now um, known as Full Circle, and they asked me to look after our um, existing customer portfolio. We were a startup SaaS business. Um, we had a portfolio of ex existing customers. We had been told about uh, customer success, but we didn't really understand what it was or what it entailed. This is, you know, at the very beginning of the movement in in, in EMEA. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went out there and I figured out what, you know, what customer success could look like, who was in the space already. Uh, and joined with the um, existing CS people in EMEA in order to found um, what is now a thriving customer success community in EMEA, but also very connected globally, um, customer success, passionate people across the world. So I guess, you know, technically coach, author, consultant, generally I'm a people passionate, I elevate others, uh, and I look to make sure that we're all achieving what we most want to achieve. Love, love that. Obviously, you know, um, you've done a lot for other people in this uh, business as well. So really excited to be talking to you about this today. So um, just getting into a little bit of starting starting to unravel this topic, um, if we start from topic of uh, the first part of the equation as in customer success, now you said you were an early pioneer in this. Um, what does it mean to you and how would you define uh, customer success for, for those of you um, that love to hear your point of view on this? Well, so interesting you should use the word pioneer because uh, <laughs> weirdly I did not, even though it is 
the title of my book. Uh, so I am going to take the opportunity, please indulge me, I'm going to uh, read the very first sentence from the book, which awesome. defines okay. customer success yeah. in, in, my, in my perspective. So customer success is quite simply a business imperative to truly, consistently, and perpetually know and understand your customers. Okay. So it's a simple statement. It's not really a simple statement. It's easy to put that into words, less easy to put it into practice. But the thing to remember is that it is really having a desire to truly know your customers. So don't assume you know what they want. It is about working with them to really understand and uncover what it is that your customers want. Consistently making sure that you have that consistency so that consistency builds trust. And in a relationship, in a partnership, you need that trust. And perpetually is really important because we have a tendency to have a conversation or make a decision, put a process in place, and then decide that that never needs to be touched again. But the only thing that we can count on in this world is that change is constant. The world is always changing. Our circumstances are changing. Businesses are changing. Our customers' requirements, the people in our customers' businesses are changing. So we need to make sure that it's a cycle and that we're continually looking at it and evolving it. So the customer journey, for example, is fundamental. And we need to make sure that we not only understand that customer journey, but that we're always revisiting it right. so that we are achieving the things that our customers need as the landscape evolves and changes around us. So trying to put it into a nutshell, I'm very aware that we only have half an hour for this webinar. So uh, that to me is customer success. So however you deliver it, every business will deliver it differently, mm -hmm. but it ought to be geared towards that, achieving that definition of customer success, really understanding your customers, making sure that you're revisiting it, making sure that you're adjusting what you're doing and flexing what you're doing, evolving what you're doing based on what you understand from those customers and that partnership with your relationship, uh, with your customers. And the book itself is actually um, formatted around a framework that I came up with for the book, but actually since writing the book, I've realized it applies in every situation. So the cycle is DIME, which is design, implement, measure, and evolve. And it is a cycle. So it reminds us that we really must be, once we've designed something, we implement it, we measure it to see whether it's achieving what we expected to and what we need it to. And then we evolve it once we understand what it needs to do, where the gaps are, where the next evolution is, where the next development is. So that in the smallest of nutshells, because customer success is such a huge topic, we yeah. all talk about it on a daily basis and at conferences, you know, so, so to such great volume. But that in a nutshell is the foundation of it, I believe. I like the time uh, analogy there. It's very linked to a startup world where it is about, you know, building, measure and learn, right? Um, and, a, and a cycle again. And the other big point I took away from what you were just saying there, it's about your customer. It's not about your platform. It's not about the service you offer. It's it's are you achieving what your customers are looking to you? And the only way you can do that is if you truly understand what they're looking for um, and what their current situation is. Absolutely, because, you know, without customers and I, you know, for the early years of customer success in EMEA, when people weren't getting it at all, and there's still cust uh, businesses out there who don't understand customer success. But, you know, without customers, we have no business. So we right. need to be understanding what our customers want rather than what we want for our product or service. Yes, absolutely. Well said. Perfect. Well, I mean, obviously, we've talked a lot about customer success. We may have less talked about this second part of the equation, which is uh, around people success. So would you care to unpack that for us a little bit more and, and tell us what you think about what people success means and how do you um, implement that in businesses? So people success um, is a term that I've been using for a number of years. Uh, and actually at Pulse Europe in November last year, 
um, I raised it at Pulse Academy Live um, and somebody came up to me afterwards and said, I'm, I'm starting to hear this more and more. So it was really interesting to hear you raise it and, you know, and have it put in tandem with customer success. The reality is that when we talk about customer success, that's not some intangible um, and a theoretical thing. Mm -hmm. A business is made up of people. A customer is made up of people. So when we talk about customer success, we are talking about people success. We are talking about a relationship between people, uh, mm -hmm. whether that's the you know, salesperson on your side and the um, the business manager on the other side, whether it's an account management, whether it's marketing, product, customer success. It's all people at the end of the day. People create the process. People, Even if you're doing digital success, people are creating the process and people are going to be receiving the content that you are de delivering out. Mm -hmm. So people are at the heart of everything. So for me, if you look after your people, then you're looking after your customers and you're looking after your business. And those people are the people in your business in your customer's business, which I think we think of slightly more often these days. I think rather mm -hmm. than thinking we are just dealing with an organization, we are thinking about what's important to that organization and their objectives, but also what's important to the person that I'm relating to. What is that partnership? Mm -hmm. What does it need to look like? What does it need to be driving? What does it need to be mm -hmm. producing? But what we still forget is we need to be looking after the people on the inside, you know, and all of them. So for myself, as I say, I've always been an elevator of others. So for me, every single person I come into contact with is a customer of mine, whether that is internal or external. So therefore, even in that definition, customer success becomes people success because you're looking after all of the individual people. So as an individual, I think we should all be looking after every person we come into contact with, because if you make them the best version of themselves, then they will produce the best output they possibly can. And that's going to shine back on you. Um, again, throughout the book, I've probably uh, repeat it in every chapter, at least, if not on every page, you know, their success is your success. So we need to be looking after other people in order for that to come back onto us. And then the next thing is that businesses really need to understand that the people in their businesses are their biggest asset. Absolutely. Not a resource. We're not a resource. We're not something to be whipped and, you know, made to work until, you know, we've sweated blood and tears and we're a husk on the floor. If we are motivated and fulfilled and enjoy our work, then we will produce the most stellar results for our business and for our customers that we possibly can. And there is a myriad of research out there now which proves this. So there's actual stats to back up this way of thinking. Um, I'm not going to go into all of that now. We don't have the time, but there's loads of uh, research out there now which really backs this up, which is really exciting. So there's a lot of um, talent teams out there now, people teams out there, rather than HR, which is, you know, human resources makes it sound like we are a resource, like we're expendable, like we don't have to be cared for. There are now, there is now a movement to move this towards people teams so that they are really creating good cultures, good working environments, good relationships and partnerships so that we're at our most happy, fulfilled, motivated, and therefore productive. Um, and I think that's that's the real key with businesses now. You know, we've talked a lot over the years about being customer centric. And that is true. But you can't have customers without people and you can't have businesses without people. So let's look after the people and everything else will, you know, excel because of that. Fall out of that. Right. I really like that insight in terms of we are all ultimately. Yeah. You need to think about your people because your people serve your customers. Um, and that's how customers stay with you because they've they're satisfied what, what your people are delivering for them and whether yeah. that people means a person that codes the platform or your people that um talk to the customers ultimately 
it's equal equal cycle from that. Um, you mentioned business success in there, and let's just uh, for the benefit of the of the webinar, just finish the equation while we're unpicking it in in its smaller parts. So, um, how would you define business success? Because obviously there are multiple ways of looking at it. One potentially, you know, very crucially, financial profit, uh, um, EBITDA, etc. But what, in your opinion, would you say is a successful business? Uh, so in my opinion, so this is, you know, very personal would be, um, a great culture, um, a great focus on customers and achieving the objectives for your customers and that you've set for yourself, um, in your mission and vision in reality, that is going to differ for every company. So, um, you know, nobody dictates that except for the group of people who come together in an organization. And I think the key there is to find an organization that fits your mission, your vision and your principles. Um, so business success, it can be profit and only profit. And, and that's fine. There are people in the world who, you know, that is their main motivator. So that is OK. Um, but for me, I think, you know, when you have got even if you're just looking after profit, if you look after your people, there is no better way to get the maximum profit out of your business for all of the reasons that I've um, related so far in, in you know, just scratching the surface of all of these topics, really. Uh, and again, the stats and the research backs that up. So business success for me is whatever you have defined you want to achieve in your business. Um, and then as an individual working in a business, um, success also needs to look how you define it not how anybody else would define it but what do you think business success looks like and you know make sure that you go and work for an organization that um that subscribes to that way of success yeah i think that's very very valid point in terms of it's got to align with your values in order for it to you be satisfied in there and therefore you can be the best self and um, and help others to be successful um and there is a reason why we put that as the equation um, yes. the, the output not the input right <laughs> yeah and, and actually I would probably go as far really for me I would probably switch it around and do people success plus customer success equals business success because people are the foundation of everything and customer is just another label for looking after people right yeah. uh, one point I did want to make which could have come into uh any one of those areas, actually, any one of those categories is another reason for looking after your people is that they are a really um, visual and transparent and immediate insight into your brand. You know, mm. when when you are spending any time with any organization, whether that's customer support, uh, you know, you think of us as um, consumers, when we work with, um, you know, B2C companies, when you're working with people in retail shops or in, on customer support, the, the experience you have with the individuals gives you a view of what that organization is like. And we do like to work with people that we can trust and that we can relate to. So if we're looking after our people and they are coming to the front line and coming to all of those interactions with real joy and motivation and, you know, um, commitment and loyalty to an organization that speaks volumes to us. So, again, another really vital reason to be looking after our people because it looks after our customers because it looks after our business absolutely i think you can't fake that um level of plus one as i like to define it yeah. which is like that in blue or in black um version of of kind of the question in that um versus this is a process i follow and therefore it's repeatable and you know you you feel uh, very transactional after that right so yeah. like that point where, where you're coming from with it um actually i want to pick up something you mentioned a little bit there earlier on about um working for a great culture um so if we we talk a little bit about that what do you think are some of the ways to create a great team culture um especially within cs i mean i know you've obviously done that in, in multiple companies um yeah how do, how do would you start especially if you start with a new 
new team, you move to a new team or you build a new team? Uh, so such a broad topic. Uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to give one perspective. It's certainly yeah. not covering the whole thing. Um, creating a culture. I don't think, I don't think you create a culture. I think a creature, a, sorry, a culture comes into being depending on the behaviors of the individuals within the group. So um, I'm trying to shy away from the term manager or leader um, because it, I don't actually think a culture necessarily uh, is built by the leader. I think a culture is built by everybody in it. Mm -hmm. um, however, a leader's behavior is going to have a great impact on it. So um, how to create a great culture, I would say starts with hiring. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be really clear on what your mission and vision is. Because if you know what your mission and your vision are, then you can understand what your principles are, what your values are. And that's really key to bringing in a group of individuals who will um, bring the same kinds of energy. Um, I think it's really important to be diverse, you know, mm -hmm. make sure that you bring in different people with different perspectives. You can have the same values as somebody, but have very different experience, very different skills, very different qualities. So the values, I think, is really key, um, making sure that you bring like-minded individuals together, but with very different perspectives so that you get a very well-rounded um, uh, set of perspectives and opinions. Um, and then... As a team, and I guess as a leader, uh, I'm very much about servant leadership. I'd like to, uh, as I say, elevate and facilitate the environment for others. So, you know, allowing a space where people know that they have permission to speak, um, obviously always with respect to one another, but being able to um, raise any challenges or concerns or great ideas. Um, you know, the it's much easier to talk about what to avoid than mm. how to create a great culture. Uh, so, you know, for me, it is, um, you know, avoiding using bland terms. Uh, I have a personal pet hatred for this is a safe space because by saying it's a safe space doesn't make it a safe space you have to demonstrate it is which is why i say to create a you know one of the things to create a good culture is to ensure that everybody knows that they have permission to speak don't tell them they do show them that they do you know mm. constantly ask people for their opinion and their um, perspective and also make sure that you're understanding what their preferences are. Some people are introverted, so would like to share their perspectives in a one-to-one. -one. Other people are extroverted and are very happy to get into a brainstorming session and you know throw ideas around the place. So make sure there's lots of different ways for people to share their perspective so that you get that well-rounded view. Um, and then, yeah, just make sure that everyone is in respect of the same values, the same culture, and then the culture will will come along in the way that you would want it to. If you try and create a culture, uh, it always feels, um, it feels, yeah, it feels forced and false and um, like people are doing it for a tick box exercise. Uh, rather than doing it quite holistically and naturally, you know, absolutely have, you know, have statements in place, um, but don't over, over egg it, don't overcook it, allow the environment to create in a most positive and organic way. Um, and obviously keep an eye on it, like anything, like, right, like the dime cycle, the dime, right? You never just let something be, uh, you know, once it's in in place, you measure it and you evolve it, you adjust it to make sure that it's achieving what you need it to achieve. I can tell your coach-like mindness is coming through there. A lot of about uh, sort of not telling, asking and um, and getting people to um, participate and think for themselves and, and so forth. Um, 
shameless plug, by the way, uh, you were talking about the diverse hiring. Um, Amber and I did in our last uh, webinar a uh, whole talk about diverse teams and how successful they are. So I'm glad that you've also preached into that. So if you haven't watched that webinar, go ahead and, and watch it. Um, just last pick on anyone, by the way, if you have questions, please feel put them in the chat and we'll get to them in a minute. Um, you mentioned something about this sort of course correct if different things are definitely not going in the right direction. So how would you address it? Um, what's your what's your top tips if you're if you're seeing things are not actually heading in the right direction either in your any of any parts of these two big elements that we're we're talking about? Um, well, first and foremost, it, it is important, as we talked about in that last point, is to make sure that you are monitoring it, um, mm. you know, not in a big brother dictatorial way, just keeping an eye on it and making sure that everybody is comfortable, everybody has got their their space to talk and share, and that nobody is feeling that they're being bullied in any way, um, mm. or that, you know, that they feel that they're in a toxic environment anyway, uh, in any way. Um and it's important to be brave. The convers If there's a conversation that needs to be had, then a conversation needs to be had. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, aggressive or, you know, it just, a lot of us feel uncomfortable having uncomfortable conversations, um, but it's crucial that you talk about it as soon as possible rather than to let it fester and grow because it will um, exponentially create problems. Uh, one of the things that I find most useful to manage this is, um, you know, we talked about um, good creating a good culture, starting with hiring, is when I start a relationship um, with anybody, so with a customer, with a new team member, with somebody else in another department, you know, any of my customers, um, I have a, a framing conversation with them. Uh, some people call it contracting. Uh, where you you talk about it's like a success plan a success mm -hmm. plan for any relationship yeah. right how are we going to work together what do what do i need to bring to the partnership to get the best out of you and what do i need you to bring to get the best out of me um and we talk about um hard you know red lines so what are deal breakers um what are preferred ways of um communication all of those sorts of things expectations uh, you know, and a job description would be part of that, you know, and the, and the value statements and the mission and the vision, all of that can form part of the framing agreement, the success plan, if you like, for each individual relationship. Uh, and then when somebody deviates from that, and it might be me, right? It doesn't, you know, nobody's perfect. So it might be somebody else having to have a conversation with me. Um, you know, having had that framing conversation, it, it gives everybody the permission to refer back to it and say, you know, this is how we said we'd work together. I feel that this isn't being honored. You know, what's your perspective of that? And, and what are we going to do about it? Do we need back to the dime cycle again? Right. Do we need to adjust this agreement? Uh, and in which case, what, how is it going to benefit us? Uh, and how is it going to change? That's a really key part for me. Having that agreement in the first place allows you to have what could be a difficult conversation in a really structured, um, non-confrontational way. Uh, top tip for me, I've learned something new today and that framing conversation is great. Um, do you practice that often um, yourself in terms of how yeah. it's meaningful to have with someone else? Yeah, always. Um, when I'm, um, you know, when I'm leading a team, uh, I always have a framing conversation with uh, with every single one of my team members, and we, you know, we revisit it on a regular basis. Uh, it it is part of the success plan, so it is part of a an early conversation with a customer. And yeah. again, you know, when you when you do business reviews, um, you know, whether this forms part of a quarterly one or a, a more regular one, or whether it's the annual one. Uh, we do just make sure we review it and make sure that uh, things are still in place the way that they should be, whether things have changed, because change is constant, just mm -hmm. making sure that we flex and evolve it as and when is necessary. So, yeah, with with all my partnerships. Amazing, amazing. Um, look, we are almost at the hour um, mark, but uh, I love to end this conversation with um, 
key takeaways for the audience. So what are some of your top calls to action or things that you want to leave the audience remembering from this conversation? Uh, so I would say the framing um, technique, I have to say, is a key technique that I have used through my career, uh, whether I was formally aware that I was doing it. And since I've been formally aware that I I absolutely do it. Uh, and I talk to my mentees and my coaches about it every, you know, all the time, every single person that I've had a relationship in that way, I have recommended to them that they put this in place generally it comes up when they have a difficult relationship so you know if if that's what you need to do you know if you've got a difficult situation at the moment then start with a framing conversation you know it doesn't have to be at the very beginning of a relationship you can come to it <clears throat> excuse me um later on um but and it's a great way of having if you haven't already made that definition of the agreement it's a great way of introducing it and having a, a difficult conversation in a very um natural way in a unheated way so mm -hmm. i would say make sure you remember the framing technique um also just remembering that when we talk about businesses and customers uh and customer objectives business objectives we're talking about people so remember to interact with people on an ind individual basis uh, again, my um, mantra, their success is your success. If you look up after other people, if you elevate other people, if you facilitate what they need to achieve, then that ultimately does come back to you through, as we know, in customer success, through referrals, through reciprocal help, through advocacy, all of those sorts of things. And the last thing, which I haven't really mentioned so far, but um, a thought that I had very recently, I um, I have a podcast called Inspiring Future Leaders. Uh, and so I talk a lot about people, culture and leadership. Uh, and one day we were talking about um, ripple effects and also the fact that, you know, some people feel that they aren't a leader because they are not Barack Obama or, um, you know, any other, you know, Nelson Manda Mandela, um, Malala, all of these incredibly high profile inspirational figures who have impacted people globally and the really important thing is to remember you know it's hard it's hard to think well what's the point of doing anything because i'm not going to impact everyone in the world and the important thing to say is that we're not all going to be the leader that impacts everyone globally but we are a leader and we will impact somebody and we will be that person to that person. And they will then be inspired to go off and do stuff. And they will inspire another person who will inspire. And it just ripples out. So every single thing that we do will have a wide reaching impact because of the fact that we're all connected and we're all people. So take the initiative, go out there. Don't wait to be given a role or a remit or a you know responsibility. Go out there, take the initiative, be the leader for yourself and for those around you. Kelly, what an inspiring conversation. I really always love talking to you. <laughs> I love talking to you too, Mina. <laughs> and it uh, looks like our audience got a lot of out of that. Very lovely comments so far as well. But that's that's all we had time for today. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights. Uh, we are back actually in two weeks time with another inspirational leader. Um, so tune in for that. Um, we're doing a halfway September conversation already. But uh, thanks everyone who, who turned into our live session and thanks everyone that listened on on demand. Um, and please do let us know what you think about this. It will be great to hear your, your voice. And obviously, Kelly, if you want to connect with Kelly, feel free to reach out to her on LinkedIn. I'm plugging that in there for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Do please. I'm always very happy to connect to people. Yeah. Thank you again and uh, take care. Bye bye. Thank you.